Hello everybody, it's Mike Levin. Sunday, February 8th, 2015, right at around 9.15 a.m. and I'm out walking the big guy. And uh, it's not as biting cold as, it, as it's been lately, so it's a lot easier to do these videos. Uh, it requires having my uh, hand out holding the camera out in front of me. I don't have one of those uh, phone holding sticks yet. Uh, not quite to the point where I want to look that way walking around the neighborhood. But at any rate, uh, the Pipulate project is probably uh, almost unrecognizable. Well, that's not true. It's certainly recognizable, but it's so much beyond where I left off when I was documenting like every git commit as a YouTube video. Uh, there's going to be a lot of catching up to do when I start showing the actual code. The uh, main logic flow is still there. The functions that do all the heavy lifting, uh, the main parts is, are still there. But I've uh, put a lot more things in there, like the um, generator yield architecture, in order to get streaming output. Uh, so much to talk about. Each one of these things could have been its own separate YouTube video. But I was going fast and furious so that I can start to deliver working product at the office and put this into use every day and package it up in the tiny Linux virtual machine so the SEO community at large around the world can start using it too. Um, and one of the most interesting bits is certainly how uh, I send data back to the user while you're pipulating because it's not a simple web page load. Uh, you might uh, crawl a considerable portion of a site with a single click. Uh, you might uh, do lookups against a uh, hundred rows of data. And while that is going on, feedback needs to be coming to the user or they're going to think everything's locked up. And the feedback has to be as interesting, engaging, informative, and indeed addictive as it can be in order to uh, give Pipulate a good reputation. Uh, it shouldn't have the reputation for being flaky and hanging and to entertain the user. So even if they do have to wait a little bit, uh, they'll like waiting because it's so entertaining to look at. And that came down to um, a Python feature, which I started making heavy utilization of and a concept that I just implemented last night, and I'll say a few words about each. First is uh, one of the areas of Python and programming in general that I really only vaguely understood. I, I knew that memory bloat is one of the big problems on uh, servers because when you're processing a batch job against, say, uh, 100,000 pieces of data, rows uh, in a database, uh, or rows in a spreadsheet or whatever. The temptation is often to do something with every single row and then keep the results of your work in memory as you go. And uh, that would end up with a, some sort of object in memory that had a hundred thousand of something. Now think about that. If it's a large amount of data in every row, that's a hundred thousand times however uh, large the row's data is. And uh, if it's a site crawl with all the HTML of every page on every row, that would kill your server fast. Uh, especially if there were four or five people using the server at the same time to do similar jobs. So, the programming technique that's used to avoid that kind of memory bloat, well, there's different names for it. Uh, but in Python, they use the term generator. Uh, in the past, I've also heard uh, forward-only cursors, fire hose mode, but all these words are a different way of saying uh, fire and forget, which is another way of saying it. You're processing a hundred thousand of something. It's possible to uh, process a single row, send it to the user, and then dump everything that you just were looking at out of memory so that you're starting with a clean slate on every row. So the amount you have in memory is only ever one row's worth of data instead of all 100,000. And you're giving it to the user 
in tiny little bits as you go. And uh, giving it to the user could mean sending the output to a, a web browser, in which case the end result is streaming. Uh, it could also be writing to a file so that by the time you're done you, you have a file built and it's ready for download. That's what Google does when you like ask for large data sets from uh, AdWords or Webmaster tools. It takes a moment. It's probably using the iteration technique, or no, it's, it's not iterate, it's uh, the, uh, the generator technique on their end. And then it pops a file onto a file system somewhere in memory, gives you a link, you download it, and then it deletes it. And that is a scalable approach to managing large amounts of data. But when you're updating a Google spreadsheet through an API and you wanna keep the user informed of what's going on as it happens, you're just sending a stream of data to the browser so that you can uh, report on each row or whatever. And uh, instead of using the return keyword to return a value from your function, you use the yield keyword. So yield and return are very equivalent in Python, but return waits to the entire function is done operating. And, but yield returns a value from the function while the function is processing. So if you have a loop that's going through 100,000 loops, there's 100,000 returned bits of data from, the, uh, <clears throat> from that function. And uh, yield essentially uh, puts the function on hold, freezes its state, returns the data, and then picks up back where it left off. Uh, bam, you've got streaming. Now this is uh, really important for Pipulate because a, everything works that way. All the data sent to the user is uh, shown in a browser like that. And so I'm yielding all over the place. And there's nuanced little issues, which I'll probably break out to separate videos. It wouldn't make sense to, uh, to make this video too long. But in essence, uh, yield has uh, parameters because you can return any kind of data uh, object. Um, so you can yield two pieces of data, three pieces of data, whatever. And so you're streaming channels of data on the browser can have two ends. You can have one to update one little box somewhere uh, in like sort of a scrolling list log file form, which I'm doing, and then update uh, another area somewhere which shows the status of something in memory. So this is gonna get very clever and that's gonna be uh, the, the look and the flavor and the personality of Pipulate because as it's reporting to you what it's doing, it's gonna be showing you in a very visual way what objects look like in memory, what the row that it's processing looks like, what the execution of the function and the building of essentially what are JSON objects that update the spreadsheet rows look like. And it's almost gonna teach you how to program or at very least teach you a lot about data structures in memory as you sit and watch Pipulate work. So when the time comes for you to do your own programming, so many concepts are gonna be intuitively obvious to you because you've seen it occurring during pipulation. It's a strange idea. I haven't seen it done a lot of other places. It's another part of why I believe Pipulate will rise to become a killer app in SEO and social media and anywhere where you have to collect data on a recurring basis uh, and change things quickly. In fact, the motto I'm coming up with for Pipulate is, uh, is Pipulate, what do you want it to be today? Because it's so flexible, especially in your ability to see what it's doing by default or by conventional behavior, modifying it a little bit, and then spinning your own versions of uh, functions and scrapers uh, for your particular unique tasks. So this is not an uh, out-of-the-box kind of solution, although it will work very much out of the box, especially with Lavinix, so you don't even have to configure or install, you just download it and use it. But it's an out-of-the-box product that will be infinitely customizable as if you were a programmer without being a programmer. So there you have it. Um, I'm starting to finally articulate the difficult notions of what I'm doing but it's gonna be easier to see it. This will make a lot more sense as Pipulate finally comes together and you start to see it in action, which I hope I'll do one of those videos to introduce you to it.
over the next few days. So I gotta stop now. Uh, thank you for joining me. Hope to talk to you soon. Don't forget to subscribe and send this video to someone in the SEO or social media industry who you think needs to see what's coming. Talk to you soon.